Um, so firstly, thank you to those who came by the live stream earlier. I know it was quite a short one, only about less than 20 minutes, but um, yeah, uh, that the room was being used by others, so I had to cut that off. Um, no doubt there'll be more videos and updates about the situation in Russia today. It's a major, major news story. Um, but for this video, I'm going to cover something which I, I personally think is a lot more trivial. Um, by trivial, I'm not saying it's not important, but it just seems to me to be, look, frankly, a parochial way of thinking and um, a dogmatic way of thinking. It, it just, you know, it, it just feels like enough already. Uh, I'm talking about the Brexit narrative. Um, so today, the 24th of June, uh, apparently it's seven years since we voted to leave the European Union, uh, that referendum in June 2016. Now, of course, the Leave side won um, 17 million to 16 million votes uh, here in Sunderland. Sunderland was one of the cities that went for Leave. I voted Remain uh, and I have no regrets about voting Remain. Um, I'm not convinced that Brexit was a wise move. Um, I'm, I'm not convinced it was a good idea. I'm not convinced it has been good for this country. That doesn't mean that I love the European Union. It doesn't mean that I, you know, was a, a Remainer zealot. Um, one of the worst things about that whole referendum was just how bitter and divisive it got because, and that's why I don't like referendums generally. I think they should be avoided as much as possible unless absolutely necessary because by nature, referendums are tribal and you know, people who could be getting on perfectly well one week, a referendum comes along and suddenly it pitched into one camp or another. Uh, I hate it, to be quite honest. I hate that sort of what it causes and it forces people to get on the defensive and, you know, prove their position or it, it just, it's quite toxic. Um, but anyway, I've noticed that there, a number of people have been posting around social media, Twitter and so on about celebrating Brexit Independence Day today. No. I'm not going to be celebrating it. I see nothing to celebrate. I mean, I'm talking about people like Julia Hartley Brewer, Dan Wooten, um, Nigel Farage, um, pretty much everyone on GB News. You know, it's this mentality of the, this is some sort of Independence Day. Well, technically, I suppose you could argue we got independence from the European Union. We broke away from the European Union. Wrangling. It's still not 100% done in the sense that we haven't got that American trade deal that was, you know, banked on. Um, and, I, you know, I think it's a, it's a question of blaming others, you know. So the migrant crisis, so well, let's blame the French government. Um, trade deal, so let's blame Joe Biden for his vendetta against the UK. I'd like to see sort of hardline Brexiteers take a little bit of responsibility I think, okay, they made this decision. Don't blame Remainers. Don't blame the French government. Don't blame the American government. This was your decision. Um, we're one of the few countries in the world that doesn't have a single national day. There's the days for the four nations. You know, there's St. George's Day, St. Patrick's Day, St. Andrew's Day, St. David's Day. But we're one of the few countries in the world that doesn't actually have a single national day. There's the King's birthday. Um... There's some sort of unifying events or national events like Remembrance Day, which I, I think should be maintained. But yeah, well, one of the very few countries that doesn't have a single national independence day. Now, Brexiteers are trying to push this, like this should be it. I don't think so. I think we should have some sort of national day, but not this, not something that was so divisive. I mean, they'll argue the British people voted this way and yeah, the majority won. That's democracy. I've always accepted that. And yeah, that's it. But that doesn't mean that it's something to celebrate. It doesn't mean that something that was so divisive is therefore should be pitched to. And, you know, it's very manipulative because people who reject this are going to say, oh, they don't believe that patriotism. How dare they? I'm sick and tired of the puritanism of Brexiteers. That is to say, Unless you support their magic Brexit, you don't care about this country. Some sort of Europhile or liberal elite. They, they really need to get over themselves, quite frankly. Now, I know that there were some Remain people that won't accept democracy who are trying to have a Brexit rerun. I get that. 
and they're just as arrogant, and I have criticised them. And the EU, it's an undemocratic institution in many ways. I mean, it doesn't... I think Brexit was a wake-up call. I think they need to listen to ordinary Europeans a lot more. And, you know, the Euroscepticism can be found across across the continent. Certainly there's plenty of it in France and Spain elsewhere. Um, yeah, I accept all of that. So I'm not coming from the point of view of some sort of hardline Europhile. I'll be honest, in the, two, in the mid-2000s, I would have been very much a Europhile in the sense of, so, you know, the EU is a wonderful thing. Well, maybe I was a bit naive then. The EU isn't wonderful and it can be arrogant. And I do think that a lot of fat hubris led to Brexit. But a national day, I mean, come on. It's just a national day should be something that's unifying. It should be something that has a very deep national significance where we can see the effects are, you know, positive. With Brexit, I'd say the checklist is 50-50 at best, at best. Now, it hasn't been a disaster that Remain have said it would be. We haven't had an economic um, disaster. And a lot of the issues that we're facing, rising food prices and so on, are being seen around the world. So that can't be blamed on Brexit. Uh, we had this global pandemic. That can't be blamed on Brexit. So it's true that a lot of the problems this country faces have nothing to do with Brexit. But by the same token... It is a fact that Brexit here is marketed leaving the European Union as a magic wand to, you know, solve all the problems. They didn't put it that way, but that is very much what the mantra was. Let's get our freedom, take back control. Have we? To what extent? I mean, I give credit where credit's due. There's been some successful trade deals. This trust actually has to take some credit for that, believe it or not. Um, pretty awful premiership. Um, she did do that, Foreign Secretary, I give her credit for that. Um, and, you know, the, the good news is on the European front, Brexit or otherwise, there has been a united front when it comes to Ukraine. Um, I mean, Britain, Germany, France, Italy, there has been a united front, slightly different approaches, but the resolve is there. But I, I just, I, I really have a problem with this Puritanism that comes from Brexiteers. I mean, the same people who are sort of looking for conspiracies around the corner are the same people who insist that there was a witch hunt against Boris Johnson, despite his proven lies. I mean, get over yourselves, really. It's They act like there's some sort of um, Remainer plot around every corner. Within Tory ranks, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, any Tory who's deemed to be not purist enough is hasn't got a chance uh, in terms of their ambitions. Um, it's this Puritanism I really don't like within Tory ranks. Um, they need to get over themselves. And it's saying, oh, Remainers should move on and accept the result. Well, frankly, most of the um, most of the regurgitating this, as I have seen, has been from hardline leavers. You know, it's almost like they want to constantly say, we were the winners, you know, and be triumphalist about it. What, what happened to getting on with it? making the most of it. Well, could it be that it maybe wasn't the picnic that they promised that it would be? Um, I don't think it's been a disaster, but do I think it's something to celebrate? Absolutely not. Even with all the uh, those issues that had nothing to do with Brexit, I, I don't see you know us taking full advantage of this. What about the American trade deal? That's fallen through. Um, and it's, you know, it's not nothing to do with Biden. It fell through with Trump. Any British-American trade deal is going to favour the United States, much bigger country. Compare that to, for example, a trade deal with France, which is a much more similar size in terms of demographics, GDP and so on. Um, different markets will say different things. I'm not going to say that, you know, that's evidence of Brexit. Um, some forecasts say we're the slowest growing economy of the G7. Others will contradict that. I'm not an economist, so I'm not going to weigh too much into that. But... I would just like leavers, you know, instead of constantly looking for conspiracy theories and constantly saying all oh, oh, these sinister forces are trying to overturn Brexit, why don't they show a little bit of humility and accept that hasn't been as wonderful as they made it out to be? Um, and also accept that just because they won, then it doesn't take away freedom of speech from others. You know, you can accept the democratic result of something while still being critical of it. That's not I don't think it, it concurs that that is therefore a contradiction 
you know, I can say I accept that was the way people voted uh, and that was the result. That's democracy. But I think it was a mistake. That is entirely my right to say that. And there's not a damn thing they can do about it. I'd make a comparison with the Scottish referendum. I was a staunch unionist. I'm very pleased that um, Better Together won. But I've never said that Scottish nationalists can't have their opinion. I've never said that they can't say it was a mistake or have whatever views they want. Their views can be challenged. I think they're wrong on most issues, but um, you know, freedom of speech is for everyone, as long as you're not threatening others. So, in conclusion, um, you know, they talk about Remainers being divisive. They talk about Remainers not accepting democracy. They're the ones that are pushing this divisive narrative. Celebrate our pathetic Independence Day, otherwise you're not patriotic. Independence Day, it's, we were in the EU for 40 years, right? This is a country with 2,000 years of history, okay? So it just seems very shallow, really, to talk about an Independence Day from being in a 40-year-old um, union that we were willingly part of. We were never forced to join the EU. This is this is the irony about it. It's not like American Independence Day, where the Continentals got independence from the British Empire or Bastille Day in France. That, that's why I've got a problem with Independence Day, because no one forces to join the European Union. Back in seventy three, that was had public support. You know, in the Heath administration, and in the, I think it was the seventy five referendum. Uh, people marginally voted to stay in. So it's this idea that we were somehow freeing ourselves from the shackles of the EU tyranny. I think that's an insult to those courageous Ukrainians fighting for the country. And, you know, this could be replicated all over the world. To the Taiwanese, they know what tyranny really is. The EU is flawed, but I, I think it's a mistake to compare it to a dictatorship. It's flawed. It's arrogant. It needs serious reform. Maybe it's not workable. But it, it's, it's more like a frustrating bureaucracy more than an actual tyranny. Um, so seriously, just change the records, Brexiteers, because you're not the only ones that are allowed an opinion. You're not the only ones who are patriotic. And just because people criticise your magic Brexit doesn't mean that they're against democracy. It doesn't mean that they don't accept the result. There is not conspiracies around every corner. I'm not, I, I'm not demanding another referendum. I don't think it would be a good idea. Um, and actually, most most Remain people don't. Those Remainers who are, I think they're wrong. I think it, it's not the right approach. Um, Keir Starmer has never said, let's have a Brexit rerun, yet the right-wing press are, you know, delving into conspiracies that he is. Um, there's things I don't like about Starmer, but that's just not accurate. He's always said, let's make the most of Brexit. 